Good morning uh, to everyone. Um, my paper is uh, in a little bit different direction of what we have seen during these days because we are coming at the end of a process, of a process where we have a survey, where we have an excavation, and where we need to make a communication of a site. Um, the research was carried on with the Rome Archaeology Superintendency, where they have a lot of little archaeological areas in Rome, and areas are completed, are restored, by the are trying to find a way to make communication and dissemination of these areas. And this is a big problem because you know that in Rome we have a lot of big archaeological areas, and so it's very difficult to, how to say, uh, to have visitors in these small areas. And this is the way, this, this is the reason why we are looking for some procedures that makes, can make these areas more interesting to visitors. Where we are? We are at, in the boundaries of the Roman in the Roman wall. This is the southeast corner of Fiteatos Castrense. This is the church of Santa Cruz in Jerusalem. And this is Porta Maggiore. The area we are talking about is this area where we cannot see nothing today because the, the wall, the um, Aurelian wall, uh, covered everything. But in this place, we have a lot of um, uh, excavations and uh, ruins of the, of the Caesarean Palace that is of the 4th century after Christ in the Constantine, in Constantine age. Some archaeologists, during some works of uh, the pipe company, pipeline company in Rome, found out uh, these little areas. The area was found out in 1982. There are some restoration in 19, uh, 1985 and 1986. The last restoration is in 2007, where the area is completely covered and protected from weather conditions because to preserve wall paintings, mosaics and so on they needed to have a, how to say, a, a closed area and uh, um, the area is also uh, very uh, not lighted because there, was, there were also some problems connected to the sunlight where we are going? we are going to say that the area is, as you say, it's completed and uh, what we are trying to do with the superintendency is to find a way that make this area more interesting to visitors. What we have in this site, we have a corridor, we have a triclinium, and then we have some uh, items like uh, some brickworks, wall paintings, mosaics. The area is very, very, very small. But it looks very, very interesting because a really a little part of the visitors of our coming in Rome know that there is something like that in, in this area. What we're looking for also is to make dissemination and communication more interesting. We have uh, in the recent years a lot of interesting related works, some exhibitions in the main archaeological area. This is the exhibition Forum of Augustus 2000 years ago that was made first, the first, for the first time in 2014 and now it's uh, in, in, in 2015 was made the second edition and we suppose that also in this year will be a third edition. Last year, in, so in, in 2015, we had also exhibition of the Forum of Caesar that means that the thing was coming more interesting and um, visitors were interested in understanding how that area was looking in the past. Um, this process was um, brought on by Piero Angelo and Paco Lanciani that are two uh, 
persons that are making a lot of studies on the reconstructions of the Roman periods. Um, but um, their, their work, it's, 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 a, it's a kind of work that is it's a, it's, it's a passive interaction, because there is no chance for, for the visitors to make uh, some interaction directly with the ruins and to obtain a certain kind of an information that could be for them interesting. At the same time, we have also close to that area the Palazzo Valentini Domus, that is a domus just under an, a very important um, building of the 16th century. Also, in this case, we have projection mapping used to make much more interesting and much more clear of the site of the, 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 and of uh, how the, the sites look looked in the past. Um, we had also some um, interaction, uh, interaction, active interaction uh, uh, experiences in, in exhibitions in the Trian Market Museum in 2014 again uh, during the Augustus celebration, um, where we can have uh, the use of Kinect or use of uh, another kind of device that is the leap motion. That makes it much easier to the visitor to to to, uh, to say to explore by themselves the, the, what they have in front and to obtain by themselves the information. Um, so uh, our procedure is it's really not interested on on the on the on the data from where we start because we say that we are working on a place that it's uh, um, it's restored just eight years ago, nine years ago. But what we're interested in is to try to find uh, a direction that, and the procedure that can be used also in other areas, according obviously with the superintendency. Um, unfortunately, um, the superintendency during the restoration works they didn't make a, a good survey campaign, so we need to start to have some information to work with. And first of all, we started with um, a laser scan, scanning survey, because we needed to, to work with a 3D model. Because with the 3D model, we can uh, obtain a lot of results in, in, in terms of, uh, of dissemination and communication. So uh, the first point was to det the detection of the area, just to obtain a 3D model, and to work with, with which with work who, with which work, sorry, for development of alternative design, creation of human machine interaction, and preparation of the stage for making a much more um, communication and interaction between visitors and, and the, the site. So, the first part of the, our research is step one was to try to understand and make an analysis of the space and the items, starting from the triclinium. Uh, the archaeologist of the area is Donato Colli and, uh, um, and Anna De, 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 Angel, De Santis, which gave us a lot of information, obviously, of the area, because we are not archaeologists, we are architects, and we are not interested in, really in, on, on the starting data that were given as from the archaeologists themselves. So, analysis of the space and items the declinium. Then we have uh, the analysis of the space and items the mosaics, because we have three kind of different mosaics, because this, the Caesarian house, uh, Domus, uh, was built in different stages. So, we have different levels of paintings and obviously of wall. Then we have analysis of the brickwork that was made on op in Opus Mixtum and uh, wall paintings, different kinds of wall paintings. The second step was the Zalazar scan survey with the point clouds. The space is very, very small, that it was very easy to make the point clouds, just in, I think, in three hours we made all the survey. But what was really interesting for us was to understand how to get a 3D model and how to use this 3D model after for dissemination. We, we decided to use an open, soft, uh, open, uh, open source software like Blender 
because Blender gave, um, gives us some opportunities that other software doesn't, that, that doesn't give us. So um, the first step was of the 3D modeling stage was a reconstruction of what we have today there. So a reconstruction on how the, sites, the site looks today. And then the second step, that is step four for our procedure, it's a 3D reconstruction of the spaces in the 4th century after Christ and to understand how the place looked in the past. Obviously, all the process, as I said before, was uh, governed and was in, with uh, the superintendency with Donato Colli and Anna De Santis. So, when we have the model of what is the place today, and we have a model of what was the place in the past, we are able to, to uh, organize and to make some first forms of communication. One of the, one, and, and the first is, for instance, a real-time virtual tour <coughs> using PC. So that means that you can make a virtual tour also from your house, just using internet connection with computer. And in this case, the Blender Dream engine was very useful because if some one of you knows how Blender works, Blender is a very important and very powerful modeler, but it also has a lot of tools that, con that um, um, allows uh, a, 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 a lot of kinds of visualizations. This is just a recording of uh, the real-time tool we made. This is, was, this is the triclinium, and at the end of the triclinium we have a little room that was just connected with the triclinium. Take in mind that you can obtain this kind of information just making a real-time navigation of the model. And take also in mind that with Blender uh, you can, th this is special for scholars, you can uh, uh, add a lot of information or change a lot of information and just in real time, for the second time, uh, change, make change directly and effective in, in, a, in a couple of minutes. The same model in step six, it's used with um, a real-time virtual tour, in this case, on portable devices. So we uh, transformed the 3D model with Unity, and this is the reason for why we can use it on tablets and on, obviously on, on smartphones and so on, just to obtain a different way of uh, the last part we made is a projection mapping of the area, of the triclinium area. In this case, uh, um, we are interested in giving information on how the brick works uh, and on how the mosaics are uh, organized in different levels in different stages of the Sessorian domus. So we have a point of view of the projector, and in this case we need to start and to understand how the projector can be used and can be placed. Take in mind that the, play, the, the, the area is completely closed, so that means that we can have projections, projectors in, in any place. And this is just a, a screenshot where we have the projection mapping of the wall painting and of the mosaics. Um, this was supposed also to move, but I'm not sure. The last last slide is of what is going on now. Uh, we have talked about the real-time procedure that makes possibility to, to have a model that it can be navigated in real time. We are talking about we talked about the projection mapping that gives us some information about the site directly there, but it's a passive interaction. What we're looking now with the sprint tendency is to make um, an interactive 
procedure that can be uh, governed and, uh, uh, how to say, guided directly by the visitors, that is use of flip motion and or other um, interactive uh, devices uh, like Kinect and so on. But in this case we already experimented um, the use of the leap motion for uh, um, the form of Nerva, the colonial form of Nerva, and we found out that it works, it fits well also with the, uh, with the needs of the visitor. Obviously, in this case, we have one-to-one -one procedure, that means that the interaction can be governed and can be used just by one visitor by time. This is the last slide and thank you for your attention.